Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another episode of Parasitology series. Today we are going to talk about Reconculus mediensis. This is a continuation of the Parasitology series, especially the nematodes. If you haven't watched the video on introduction to nematode, watch that video first, then you will have a great grip on this parasite as well. If you are new to my channel, a very warm welcome. Before starting the lecture, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. Grab a pen and a notepad and let's get started. Draconculus medinensis. It is a tissue nematode that is responsible for causing draconculiasis. It is also called as guinea fire worm. This disease is on the verge of being eradicated. In this picture, you can see the adult Draconculus medinensis worm. We will discuss its structure, size, shape, uh, in detail in the morphology section. Lecture outline. I have introduced you guys to the Draconculus medinensis. Now we will talk about its morphology, habitat and transmission, life cycle, pathogenesis and epidemiology, clinical finding, lab diagnosis, treatment, and at the end, the prevention. Morphology. Before starting the morphology in detail, I'd like to tell you guys that what is the infective stage and what is the diagnostic stage of this one. The infective stage is larvae that is introduced uh, when the cop pods are ingested in drinking water. These cop pods contain the infective larvae. Diagnostic stage is the adult worm that appears in the cutaneous ulcers in the human body. Larvae. It has three stages. L1 or the first stage larvae. Undergo certain developmental stages to become L2 or the second stage larvae and eventually the L3 or the third stage larvae. That is termed as the infective larvae. The L3 is actually responsible for causing infection in the human being. Adult worm shape. It is slender, twine thread like in shape. Twine thread means a strong thread that is twisted maybe one or more than one like two threads that are twisted together just like that so this one looks like that it is cylindrical and it has a smooth body size as we know for all nematodes male is smaller as compared to female so male is four centimeters while female is 60 to 80 centimeters color color of the adult worm is white structure the adult worm of the Draconculus medinensis has two ends. One is anterior and the other one is posterior. Anterior end has a minute triangular mouth. We'll discuss uh, or visualize the structure in a picture in a moment. And the posterior end is tapering and is bent in a form or in a way to form a hook-like structure. Tapering means that it is narrow or small as compared to the whole body. The body fluid is toxic. Lifespan. For female, the lifespan is one year, and for males, the lifespan is not more than six months. Adult guinea fire worm. As in this picture, you can see this is the anterior end, having this small, minute, triangular mouth, and this is the posterior end that is tapering, which means that it is smaller and narrow as compared to the whole body. It has a twin thread-like structure. As you can see, like these two threads are twisted together. It has a smooth body surface. As you can see, it is cylindrical. Habitat. Hosts. The definitive hosts are the human beings, while the intermediate hosts are the crustaceans, the cop pods. These small cop pods, as you can see this one. Transmission. Transmission occurs by ingesting the cop pods containing the infective larvae in the drinking water. How you're going to ingest those cop pods? Definitely, the small crustaceans will be present in the drinking water. When any human being will take that water, that will have those infective larvae containing cop pods. So, they are ultimately responsible for causing the infection. Okay, I've got a question for you. Which stage of larvae is infective? Right, that's the alpha, the third stage of larvae. Life cycle. Life cycle of Draconculus medinensis has two stages. One is the human cycle and the other one is cop pod cycle. Human cycle. Humans are infected when tiny crustaceans, the cop pods, containing infective larvae are swallowed in drinking water. The larvae are released in the small intestine and migrate into the body where they develop into adults. The adult females cause the skin to ulcerate 
and then release motile larvae into fresh water. Cop pod cycle. Cop pods eat the larvae which molt to form infective larvae. Mold uh, actually means shredding off the skin or the outer covering. The cycle is completed when these are ingested in water. Diagrammatic representation of life cycle of Dracunculus medinensis. It starts here, when human drinks unfiltered water containing cop pods, uh, and those cop pods contain the infective larvae, the L3 larvae. Larvae are released when cop pods die. Larvae penetrate the host's stomach and intestinal wall. They mature and reproduce, as you can see the male and the female there. Then the fertilized female worm migrates to the surface of the skin, causes a blister and discharges the larvae. The L1 larvae released into the water from the emerging female worm. As you can see in this picture, the skin is ulcerated and the larvae is coming out of that and it is now in the fresh water. Female worm begins to emerge from the skin one year after infection. L1 larvae consumed by a cop pod because it is present in the fresh water and not larvae is in the fresh water so definitely will be consumed by the cop. Larvae undergo two molds in the cop pod and becomes L3 larvae. And when this fresh water is taken by the human being, it will definitely be responsible for causing the infection. Pathogenesis. The adult female produces a substance that causes inflammation, blistering, and ulceration of the skin. Which skin? Usually the lower extremities, um, for example, the foot skin. The inflamed papule bones and itches and the ulcer can become secondarily infected. Epidemiology. The global eradication campaign sponsored by the World Health Organization, the WHO, to provide clean drinking water has greatly reduced the number of cases. During the year 2015, only 22 new cases were detected worldwide. The cases occurred in four African countries, Chad, Ethiopia, Mali and South Sudan. Prior to the campaign, the disease occurred over large areas of tropical Africa, the Middle East, and India, where tens of millions of people were affected. Clinical findings. Actually, the clinical findings depend on the pathogenesis. Blistering and ulceration of skin, especially in the lower extremities. As you can see, this ulcer on the skin, a rash at the site, a localized edema, reddish papule, and the papule uh, or the blister itches and burns. Some associated symptoms like nausea, diarrhea, and dizziness also occur. Complications. As we've discussed in pathogenesis, that the ulcer can be secondarily infected. So the secondary complications due to infection can be cellulitis, sepsis, arthritis, lifelong disabilities, and even death can occur. Lab diagnosis. We'll need sample of blood, urine. Diagnosis is usually made clinically by finding the worm in the skin also. We'll also go for visualizing the um, worm under the microscope. X -ray. Or we can see our worms in the x-ray. Intradermal test. Dracunculus antigens will be injected intradermally that will cause a veal to appear in course of 24 hours if the case is positive. If it is negative, so this will definitely not appear. Serologic tests are not helpful. This is the adult Dracunculus worm under the microscope. This is its posterior end because it is narrow as compared to the whole body, which means that it is tapering. And this is the anterior end and this is the smooth body surface. Treatment. The time-honored treatment consists of gradually extracting the worm by winding it up on a stick over a period of days. As you can see in this picture, that worm is uh, rolled over this matchstick and it is extracted about two inches daily. And after extraction of the worm, the ulcer will be treated. Prevention. Prevention consists of filtering or boiling drinking water. All right, guys, let's show you everything quickly. The organism is Dracunculus medinensis. Its common name is guinea fly worm. It is responsible for causing Dracunculiasis. Mode of transmission is by the ingestion of cop pods, these small crustaceans in the water. 
host. The definitive hosts are the human beings, while the intermediate ones are the tiny crustaceans, the copepods. Endemic areas are the tropical Africa and Asia. Primary location is the cutaneous diagnosis. It is mainly clinical, and treatment is the gradual extraction of the worm. Category is the tissue nematode. It has no insect vector. The stage that infects the humans is the larvae in copepods that are swallowed in drinking water. And remember that this is the infective larvae in its third stage, the L3 larvae. Stage in humans most associated with the disease is the female worms that cause skin blisters. An important stage outside humans is the cop pods that ingest the larvae. And that's it for today's video. I hope it made sense. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comment section. And don't forget to connect with me on all of my socials. I've got my Instagram where I upload amazing infographics. I've got my Twitter and I rarely upload TikTok. So do check them out. Till next time, Assalamu Alaikum.